What up everybody, this is Ian and today we're going to be talking about the most affordable gaming phone right now. So would you actually buy the Black Shark 4 or would you rather choose the best selling Poco F3? You know, let's find out. <laughs> I know how you feel. If you're really into mobile gaming, you would want to. No, that's a weak word. You would pray and wish that your mobile device actually have trigger buttons. I mean, that's like the ultimate validation that you have a gaming phone, right? By the way, these are the highlight specifications of the Black Shark 4. So up to 120 watt hypercharging, 144 hertz screen refresh rate, HDR10+, AMOLED screen, Qualcomm 870 chip, and the magnetic pop-up trigger buttons. So these features are really good at its price point. So how good does it perform? Uh, let's start with the design. Compared to last year, the Black Shark 4 is a bit toned down or relaxed. Though if you use the included hard case, it's gonna look more aggressive like how a gaming device would look like. This is the gray variant. It has a plain metallic design which is a bit closer to blue actually. And also it works quite well in rejecting fingerprints. There's also the Illusion colorway where it has an X holographic design. It's a bit close to how the Poco X3 Pro would feel in the hand. It's a thick ass one to be honest, though the heft and the metal frame give it more of a premium feel. At the bottom, we see a mic, headphone jack, Type-C port and speaker grill. On the right side, you'll see the fingerprint slash power button, two magnetic trigger buttons and volume rocker on the left side, plus dual SIM card tray and another microphone. Lastly, the top part has another speaker grill and the third microphone so the display is a 6.67 inch screen which is the same dimension as your Poco F3 and X3 Pro but this has a super AMOLED screen with 144 Hz refresh rate and HDR10 plus and up to 1300 nits in brightness. The 144 refresh rate doesn't actually show up on Android's refresh rate counter or third-party app checker and even on the UFO test website but I swear this is like the smoothest UI navigation I have ever experienced even smoother than the Poco F3 and even with my Samsung S21 Ultra amazing also I have never experienced screen dimming on this device no wonder what happened with the Poco F3 on the downside it only has wide vine level 3 certification so you are limited to watching standard definition when viewing content on Netflix I hope they fix this on a future update because Black Shark 3 users especially here in the Philippines they are still stuck with the wide vine level 3 Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 so this is a 2020 flagship chip that is slightly overclocked. It has 6, 8, and 12 gigabytes of RAM variants and storage of 128 and 256 gigs. We got onto two scores of almost 612,000. And yeah, it actually performs really good. You know, from opening apps, switching from one app to another, running your games, will be smooth sailing. So uh, this chip plus the 144 screen refresh rate and the 720 hertz touch sampling rate will really give you the smoothest UI navigation ever. <laughs> This also features a sandwiched liquid cooling system which helps in longer gaming sessions with temperature as well as in mitigating thermal throttling. Let's take a look at this 3D Mark stress test data and compare this with other phones as well. So as you can see here on the Black Shark 4, the score in each run does not fluctuate at all. What it means is even on continuous load, the performance will not be affected compared to the Exynos S21 Ultra. It just loses a lot of chunk after a few runs. 
Camera, this has a 48 megapixel Sony IMX582 sensor, the same one found on Poco F3 and X3 Pro, 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 5 megapixel macro lens with autofocus. Photos taken here are decent enough. I'm not sure if it's just AI, but it renders photos with saturated, contrasty colors. Detail is good with decent dynamic range. Images does not appear soft at all. You will get good photos on the macro lens as well. Detail and sharpness is great as long as you focus on your subjects properly. Selfie cameras is great too, even on portrait shots. Beautification filter is set to just the right amount. Good details and sharpness here. Great separation with the background as well. On videos, the front facing camera and 4K 30 FPS doesn't have video stabilization, but the rest has. So that's 1080p at 30 and 60, as well as 4K at 60 frames per second. On some instances, I am noticing that it is focus hunting. So it actually destroys the smoothness, you know, gimbal like stabilization on uh, videos. If you're not gonna pan the video, you'll get, you know, yeah, it actually it's quite smooth. However, if you start panning, yeah, you'll see that it's, you know, there's like, it's jittering, I guess is the right term. We really can't expect the best camera on a budget gaming device. Now gaming, the main reason why you are buying this phone. So let's see what the Black Shark 4 can offer us with these benchmark tests. This phone is totally killing it. Almost all game runs above 60 FPS as you can see here on the data. 1% low is also at the high 50s. On actual gameplay, it's really smooth, man, with no dropped frame rates. Smoothness for days. The sandwich cooling system runs really good too, where all of them just doesn't even exceed 38 degrees Celsius. Well, except for Genshin Impact. This Genshin Impact is like cyberpunk version on mobile devices. It is such a high demanding game. Black Shark 4 just tops the chart here, no questions asked. Average frames and 1% low sits on that all sweet spot where you can play it smoothly. If the reason you're buying this phone is to play Genshin Impact, then you won't be disappointed at all. Now, gaming feel. So how does it compare with other mobile devices? First is the 144 refresh rate and the 720Hz sampling rate. Again, the phone is not telling me that it is utilizing the full 144Hz refresh rate. Even most games are capped at 60fps, but man, it's a totally different experience. It's really a step up to the already buttery smooth 120Hz configuration that most phones have. These are really good sets of speakers, man. Symmetrical configuration. Me Meaning the top and the bottom speakers are both side firing, so you'll get that perfect uh, stereo effect. It also renders the low end of the spectrum really well. You know, first time hearing good bass on a mobile device. Headphone jack is very important on gaming, uh, but why? On wireless headsets, you'll encounter latencies. This is where the audio is not rendered real time, so you will be having delays which is not a good on competitive gaming. Your gamers just hate latency. It's best to use a wired headset. So hypercharging. China gets a 120 watt power brick that can fully charge the Black Shark 4 in around 17 minutes. While the rest of the world will get a 67 watt power brick. You know, based on my experience, the 67 watt power brick can charge my phone between 23 minutes to like 28 to 30 minutes. It is still very fast, you know. My S21 Ultra can fully charge in one hour, so that's literally half the time. For me, this is a better solution rather than having your phone be plugged 
in a wall outlet. It's a win-win situation because you are basically forced to take a rest. And lastly, of course, the magnetic pop-up trigger buttons. If you're into FPS games or RPG, this will be pretty useful. But let me explain. On Call of Duty Mobile, by default, your fire button also activates ADS or aim down sight. What happens is your gun will fire only when ADS gets fully engaged. But if you have two trigger buttons, you know, set the left one as your ADS, tap and hold configuration, then the right trigger as your fire button now even if ads has not been fully engaged as long as you're holding the fire button your gun will begin to fire bullets that's a really big advantage you know other notable features are 5g and wi-fi 6 this also has three microphones with noise cancellation feature. The stock icons also get its much needed animation. So let's say you're on to the settings page. If you minimize or close that, the settings icon will, you know, give you a cute animation. So Poco F3 or the Black Shark 4, 18K versus 24K if we're talking about cheapest variant available. We both have the same chip. Poco F3 is is leaning towards more of a gamer risk flagship ish device while the black shark 4 is more rooted for gamers if you're more into MOBA games or even Genshin Impact you know games where you cannot take advantage of the trigger buttons I would choose Poco F3 it has a more forgiving dimension thin and light it's more premium feel with its glass sandwich configuration and yeah it looks like a regular phone but if PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, shooter games in general is what mostly you're playing, then the Black Shark 4 is well worth it. Third party trigger buttons accessories really can't compete with the magnetic pop-up trigger buttons. You really just can't beat the instantaneous response that the trigger buttons of the Black Shark 4 can offer. You know, plus no screen dimming, no touch issues. It is really built to play games. So recommendation against other gaming mobile device, this is the cheapest option that you can buy. They have positioned this quite well by using Qualcomm Snapdragon 870, which is actually more than enough for most games. The cheaper chip enables Black Shark to add more upgrade to this gaming device, like the 720Hz touch sampling rate, which is actually the fastest one that you can find, you know, the same one with the Lenovo Duo 2. But that phone costs more than 800 dollars also better charging rate of less than 30 minutes compared to the competitors 144 screen refresh rate and who can beat that tactile feedback and response you'll get with physical trigger buttons definitely a game changer so if you're coming from the poco f3 or other mobile device with a similar chip like the snapdragon 865 or 865 plus then don't expect a ton of improvement in performance aside from that yes go buy it the things that i don't like you know the phone is really thick but if you come to think of it that is quite needed so that the sandwich cooling system would fit into the phone internal fan again the cooling system here is more than enough plus you have the option to purchase the fun cooler accessories they have that in various versions already 870 chip is not good for you though there's the black shark 4 pro which has the latest chip the snapdragon 888 rgb it's mostly on the back so you really can't even see it right also i noticed that the dark mode also applies on your wallpaper so if you notice here the wallpaper is on the darker side however if you switch to light mode now you can see that the wallpaper is now well rendered the headphone jack is not really well placed it will totally affect how you would hold the phone especially if you're gaming you know a quick workaround here is to just purchase an l-shaped earphone adapter problem solved all right so that's our review for today i hope i was able to help you with your purchasing decision again question or encourage on the comment section down below if you have strong dilemmas between two phones you know just just hit me up over there and I'll surely reply give us a sub and a notification bell if you like the content that you're seeing here all right so again this is Ian I'll be seeing you on the next video